Castle versus Brentford in the Premier League today, and as always, we have the living legend Super Mac to give you his views on the game today. Put your hands together, Super Mac. <laughs> so, Malcolm, last week the Malcolm McDonald Derby at Fulham, Newcastle four, Fulham one. What, what did you make of last week's game? Oh, I thought Newcastle were absolutely um, superb, and I saw new things in the side and. Uh, um, and, and on reflection, I, I, I put it down very much to um, the inclusion of Wilson um, at centre forward. We had that mainstay in, inside the opposing penalty area. And, and what I was so pleased about was that people were looking to get in there, get the ball to his feet, get in and support him. And, and it just opened the whole game up where Newcastle, they've sort of closed it. Almiron, for example, what he spent all season getting the ball and running to the corner flag. All of a sudden he was he was shifting round, going the other way and looking to, uh, to get inside the box. And once he's inside the box, he finishes up scoring goals. So, uh, and, and to be honest, I can't really remember him this season um, up until last week's game. I can't remember him getting a crossing, getting a, a proper shot in, or even getting into the opposing penalty area. But it all happened last week. So when these guys, I hope they've learned from, from what happened last week, that when Almiron gets into the penalty area, people start scoring goals, particularly him. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to today. And uh, also what I would say is that uh, Brentford are not playing well at the moment. Not playing well at all. So, uh, you know, Newcastle have got to take advantage. Also, what I think is vitally important is that when you have a performance and a result like last week, you've got to build on it. Because if Newcastle don't pick three points up today, a great result last week is, is it, it becomes a bit meaningless. It hasn't got the value that it should have. Three points away from home, absolute value, but you have to keep that value by winning your games at home. And that's what Newcastle really have to start doing. And uh, I'd love to see a performance like we saw against Fulham. And uh, it was... For me, it was absolutely terrific. The, did the sending off make much difference? P possibly it did, but I thought it was a shocking tackle. Absolutely shocking. And, uh, uh, and, and for the referee not to see it for what it actually was and send him off first time, I thought was, was ridiculous. And it needed him to go over to VAR and have another look at it and realised that it was a red card offence. It was shocking, but what really delighted me was how, uh, um, how Sean Longstaff, after a bit of treatment to his leg, he got up and it didn't make any difference to him whatsoever. He just kept going and in the end, he finished up um, knocking a ball into the net and adding to the scoreline. And that must have done him the world of good, and uh, and well done him. And if, if when you've had a nasty tackle like that, that's the way to react. Let people know it doesn't make a difference, and that in fact it just winds you up to do better. And it certainly wound Sean Longstaff up. I hope he's wound up today. For years we've criticised Newcastle's back four. I think when we've done on NUFC matters, our dream teams. I think most people have picked Bob Moncur and Jonathan Woodgate out as the centre-halves. This season we've got a really good back four. I, I, I'm struggling to think, apart from maybe Keegan's entertainers in my time, uh, a defence which was so solid and had a bit of variety about it. What, what have you made of the likes of Dan Byrne, Sven Botman, Matt Target, Kieran Trippier this season so far? Well, um, I think the defence has looked very, very solid. Um, but I, I think that there has been been one bit of a hiccup going on, and that's with Matt Target. And that's why I have a feeling that, um, uh, uh, that Byrne is going to get into the left-back position before Target. 
ta um, target is just a little bit on the slow side and gets caught on the turn. So if you've got a lively winger, target's got um, a hell of a workload on his shoulders. And uh, Burn, we, we don't see him getting forward as target might here and there, but uh, he's so solid as a defender, nobody gets past him. Um, and, and, and I think that what Eddie Howe is looking to do is create a back four that just doesn't concede, not just the, the fact they don't concede that many goals, it's they don't concede um, yards and that they look to push up and stay tight and as far away from the penalty area as they possibly can. That's great. Um, but uh, uh, it's always easier to defend nearer to the halfway line than it is on the edge of your box and inside the box. And so, uh, Shah and Botman, I think, are doing terrific. Trippier, fantastic on the right-hand side. But it's this battle um, to the left-back position, and I, I personally just have the feel that Byrne is... It, it, is we'll get the nod ahead of Trippio. But it's nice to have two good left backs. Sorry, oh, I said yeah. Trippio, I'm ahead of, ahead of uh, target. Yeah, so, uh, um, but it's, it's lovely to have that kind of competition. You know, uh, for left back, we haven't had that kind of competition for a very long time. It's good. A year ago yesterday, Newcastle United uh, got rid of Mike Ashley and gained new owners. Can you remember where you were and how you felt, Malcolm, as a former Newcastle United legend? Um, when I heard the news, yeah, I, 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 was, I was on cloud nine. <laughs> and, I, and I stayed there for some while. Um, I have never been so relieved at an event happening in football as uh, when Mike Ashley walked out of St James Park for the last time. Um, when you look back, over those years, he absolutely dragged a proud football club down onto its knees and even lower. And it was all to raise, uh, raise the funds of Sports Direct, of his other companies. They were riding on the back of Newcastle United that, that Sports Direct when Ashley bought Newcastle United, Sports Direct was a major national company here in this country. By the time he left, Sports Direct was all over the world. All over the world, on the back of Newcastle United. And what did he do in all that time, instead of saying, hey, Newcastle United have done great for me and great for Sports Direct, so let's... Let's just turn the tables a bit and, and, and spend a bit and look to improve things at Newcastle United. No, he didn't do that. Didn't do it at all. He wasn't interested. And I, I don't think I've ever been so glad and pleased and delighted to see a, um, an owner leave a football club as, uh, as I felt when he left. Um, and uh, on, the, on the form of those 14 years, if he should look to uh, take over Derby County or, or whoever, God help them is all I can say. God help them because they haven't got the kind of assets that Newcastle United have where 52,000 people will be in the ground, um, no, no, no matter what arsehole you've got in, in charge. If it was a school report, yeah, go on, round of applause, yeah, by all means. If it, if it was a school report, it's the end of the year, what would you, uh, what marks in 10 would you give the new owners? How would they done? Uh, 11 out of 10, without a shadow of doubt, I think they've been absolutely fantastic. Um, they, they've let it be known that they're going to do everything that they can but it is going to take time. And there are restrictions um, set by the Fair Play League and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but they, are, they have let us all know 
They're here for the long term and they are just looking to keep going up, up and up. And, and they're prepared to, to, to really spend some serious money as and when they're allowed to bring the right players in, put together a team that just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, I, I remember um, uh, over a year ago um, explaining just what kind of wealth there is now at Newcastle United. Um, I, I mentioned this previously, but I'll, I'll mention it again just for, for those who weren't here then. If you take a clock face of 60 seconds, that the wealth of the owners of 18 Premiership clubs is 1%. 4% is the wealth of the Manchester City owners. Newcastle United's owners have 55 seconds of those 60 in wealth. That's how frightening it is to the rest of the Premier League that what Newcastle could actually achieve and accomplish. And that's why they are showing fear. And the reason for that is they're shit scared. The whole lot of them, including Man City. And Newcastle, they will have to stick by the rules, but, and it'll take a bit longer, but they will get there. They really will. And I, I am just so excited about the next decade, I can't tell you. Preempted me, next question then. 12 months time, realistically, where do you think Newcastle will be? Will I have that first elusive bit of silverware since 69 and 55 respectively? Uh, will they have qualified for Europe? What are your views? I'm not sure we'll qualify for Europe, but certainly I think we'll give it all in the, in the cup competitions. Um, for next season, that, that I think is when Newcastle can make a serious challenge to get into the, the European competitions. And hopefully they can get directly into the Champions League. That would be great. Um, and and the, what Eddie Howe is doing is bringing in the kind of players that that's their target as well. They want to get there. They want to be there. They want to be travelling. They want to be playing two games a week. League matches at the weekend. European Cup matches uh, um, through the week. And that's wonderful. And everybody is all pulling together in the same direction. Well, that is until Shelby gets back on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Newcastle versus Brentford today, a chance to get back back wins, uh, which would be vitally important, you've already said it, uh, you've said Brentford aren't playing so well, Newcastle had a good start this season, good solid start, how do you see today's game going? I really would like to see Newcastle just go out completely dominate the whole thing. They've got the ability, they've got the, the quality of players, they've got the quality of play to do exactly that. Brentford, they'll, yeah, they'll have a, a, a good old fight and, uh, and, and a struggle against uh, Newcastle. But I really would like to see Newcastle go out and turn it on and look to supply Wilson as best they can to get support to him as they did last week. Um, and who knows? I should be really disappointed if, if we don't score a few goals today. But, and and so important, having having got that first game under our belt where we won by three goals, we've scored four, start to repeat that. And I'll tell you, if, if you start to put a few of those games and results together, the game does not get easy. It gets easier and easier the more you keep winning. That's what Manchester City have found over the past two or three years. Um, it's what Liverpool found last season. Newcastle need to get into that kind of mode where winning makes the game 
easier and simpler for you. But to do that, you have to know that you will score goals. And I want to see Newcastle coming out the pitch today knowing they will score goals during 90 minutes. My prediction, I should be really disappointed if Newcastle don't score three against Brentford and it would be lovely to keep a clean sheet and so I'm going to go for a 3 nil. and if it's more, great. <laughs> okay, great stuff, Malcolm. We'll be back after the match around about half past six if you want to hear uh, his post-match views. We're also doing the same Malcolm McDonald programme, Newcastle versus Wolves, Mal. Uh, a game you played in in 74. Mm -hmm. Know the result? Is that, the one, is that where we won 2-1? 2-1. Yeah? Yeah, 2-1. Yeah, at home, 74. Well done. Okay. Good stuff. Football card coming round now. Mal will be back in at half past six. Put your hands together for Super Mark. Yeah.